Nowadays, it seems like people throw around the word lock a little bit too loosely, throwing out a bunch of underdogs here and there and just hoping that they hit so they can be like, hey, I claimed that this was a lock and it ended up hitting. However, it doesn't seem like people usually keep track of how well the locks are doing and they just kind of throw them out on a weekly basis. But I want to present a new segment this week and I'll be doing it moving forward for every UFC fight week where I give you guys my top three candidates for my lock of the night prediction. And I obviously give out the one that I'll be doing and putting my money behind through my Patreon link in the description below. Just to give you guys an idea of how well it's been doing this year since I've been tracking it, knowing that I wanted to do something like this uh, at some point in the year. So I thought, what better time than now as I've been looking out to fill out the weekly schedule for my YouTube content. And just to give you guys an idea, this year... From UFC to Bellator to PFL to all the regional shows that I cover as well, I've been giving out my lock of the night, best prediction of the night to my Patreon folks. And as of right now, before this week's card, we are 52 and 15 for plus 23.22 units for a 7% ROI. I would put that up there with probably the best of them, if I'm being honest. That's considering five unit bet for every single lock of the night play. The big thing here is I don't mind playing chalk if I believe that it's worth it. And if I'm hitting close to 77%, what I'm doing right now, it's profitable as you guys can hear from the numbers that I just spit out to you guys. You guys can believe me if you want. You can check the Patreon page. You can ask the Patreon members themselves how well the lock of the night has been doing. And uh, that's what I want to start presenting to you guys. So the format of this segment is pretty much going to be, I'll give you guys my three most Three candidates for lock of the night plays, whether they're money lines, uh, props, or even just, uh, you know, fight doesn't go to decisions or overs or anything like that. And then I'll only be revealing my actual lock of the night prediction on the Patreon, but it will be one of the three that I give out every week. So if you want to know what it actually is, check the link in the description below. And that's where you'll see all of my uh, write ups. Everybody gets those first before the public sees them. And then obviously what my actual lock of the night and dog of the night predictions will be. All right, enough blabbering from me for now. Let's get into the three candidates for the lock of the night prediction for UFC Jacksonville. First up, we're going to go with Randy Brown, who comes in at minus 250. He's going up against Wellington Terman, a kind of a striker versus grappler type of matchup here. I feel like Randy Brown is going to do a good enough job in terms of keeping Wellington Terman on the outside of his punches with that team kick up the middle, his long straight punches down the middle. And staying on his bicycle enough that he stays on the range and stays away from the desperation takedown attempts that we've seen from uh, Wellington Terman in the past. Just to give you guys an example, his fight against Bruno Silva in four minutes of that fight going down, he shot 10 takedowns and completed zero of them. And I expect him to showcase those similar stats here against Randy Brown. Sure, Terman's striking is improving on a fight-to-fight basis ever since he's been joined up with that camp over there at Teixeira MMA, getting in some rounds with Alex Pereira, but I think it's only going to take him so far. Randy Brown is an educated striker, and he did get caught up against the fence last time around against Jack Della Maddalena, but in no way in shape or form is Wellington Terman Jack Della Maddalena. So the first candidate for the lock of the night prediction is going to be Randy Brown. Second prediction, we're going to go with a minus 190 on Brendan Allen. He's going up against the aforementioned Bruno Silva, another striker versus grappler matchup, but this time I'm going to go with the grappler. Now, the grappler, Brendan Allen, is a, is a guy that's actually improving his striking game as well, the, particularly his kicking game. He does such a good job in terms of getting the kicks to the body, getting them to the head, so he keeps his opponents on the defensive until he finds the opportunity to finally take them to the mat, and that's where he ends up doing his best work. He pulled off a big win in his last matchup against Andre Munez, where he was able to find the tap-out victory in the second round. He's on a four-fight winning streak. He has a ton of momentum on his side, and stylistically speaking, he's a terrible matchup for Bruno Silva. Obviously, there is a little bit of hesitancy regarding the possible durability issues of Brandon Allen. And if anybody's going to be able to expose them, it might be a guy like Bruno Silva. But given the momentum, given the confidence that Brandon Allen has, I feel like he's a pretty damn good spot this weekend as well, which is why he's the second candidate for the lock of the night play. And the final one, minus 225 on Gabriel Santos. This is going to be his second trip to the Octagon, going up against David Onama, who's returning from a loss to Nate Landwehr uh, in the middle of last year, I believe it was. I believe it was the UFC San Diego card. 
He had tremendous success in that first round, landing some big shots. Unfortunately, he could not put away Lanwer, and Lanwer was able to rally back in the second and third rounds and pull off that victory by majority decision. David Ornama is a talented striker with some big power in his hands, but I feel like people have been overrating him more often than not. I don't think his skill set overall is that great. And Gabriel Santos, former LFA lightweight champion or, or featherweight, I believe it was one of those divisions. It's kind of escaping me at the moment, but he won the title and then got signed to the UFC pretty much a month later and took on Lerone Murphy in a short notice matchup back in March. A lot of people believe he deserved to win that fight, myself included, as I thought he did great work in the first and second round with his striking and with his grappling that he should have gotten his hand raised, even though he ended up gassing in that third round. Let's chalk it up to the fact that he took that fight on short notice, was flying, flying from Brazil to London uh, during that fight week and cutting weight, making the weight required to be uh, eligible for that contest. And... He came up short, which he shouldn't have. He's a great striker with great pressure who will keep the foot on the gas and even land takedowns here to eventually open up a submission opportunity for himself in the latter half of this matchup. So give me Gabriel Santos minus 225 as the third candidate for the lock of the night prediction for UFC Jacksonville. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this segment. Let me know what you guys think about it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another new segment that I'm going to be dropping again it's going to be a, a new video every single day, every single weekday of every single uh, UFC fight week. So strap in, folks. We got a ton of content coming your way. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Peace.